Jesus knew why he had come. He never lost sight of that purpose, even when others you know, did things that maybe not intentionally, but uh, could have ended up derailing his purpose. He, he was able to, to, to stay focused because of, of his connection with his heavenly father. The second question that we want to look at to, today is, is the who. Who is Jesus? I want to read to you an encounter that Jesus had with, with Peter and, and his disciples. It's recorded in, in Mark chapter 8, beginning with verse 28. Jesus and his disciples went on to the villages around Caesarea Philippi on the way, and on the way he asked them, who do people say I am? They replied, some say John the Baptist, others say Elijah, and still others, one of the prophets. But what about you, he said? Who do you say I am? Peter answered, you are the Messiah. And Jesus warned them not to tell anyone about him. Now, notice Jesus is still focused on his purpose. Says that he, he's traveling around the, the area of Caesarea Philippi. He's not staying in one place. He, he's going to, to towns and villages. He's going to surrounding areas to preach. He's, he's still doing what it is that he's been called to do. And as they're walking around, Jesus asks his disciples a question. Who do people say I am? Actually, that, that probably wasn't a real threatening question. You know, the disciples were in the crowds. They've heard people talk. They, they know what people have been saying about Jesus. So, so when he said, who do people say that I am? You know, they probably popped up with, with answers pretty, pretty quickly. You know, they said, well, some people think you're John the Baptist. Well, you know, the, um, with, with John the Baptist, he had been uh, beheaded. He had been executed at, at that point. And uh, you'll, you'll remember that Herod, I don't think, really wanted to execute John the Baptist. He had thrown him in, in prison, and it was because of a, uh, he had a party one night, and, and his daughter danced, and, and uh, he was really impressed with her, as was the crowd. And so Herod, probably in a, a drunken state, said, I'll give you anything that, that you want, up to half my kingdom, just... All you have to do is ask. And so Herod's daughter conspired with his wife and her mother, and, and they said, we want the head of John the Baptist on a, on a platter. I don't think it's really what, what Herod wanted to, to do, but, but he had made the proclamation publicly, and, and so you know, if he didn't follow through, it would be a, a matter of him him breaking his word, and, and many people knew about it. So, so he put John the Baptist to, to death. But then when he heard about or saw the ministry of, of Jesus, Herod thought maybe it was John the Baptist who had come back to life. And so as some people say that uh, they, they think you're John the Baptist, well, that probably came from they had heard what Herod said. And so they thought, well, Herod must be right. This is John the Baptist that has returned. And they said, others say you're, you're Elijah. Now, the, the prophets had, uh, had said that Elijah was going to, to return and was going to be the forerunner that was going to prepare the way for, for, for the Messiah. So as some people said that, uh, that Jesus was, was Elijah, they were saying he's the forerunner. He's the one that is preparing the, the way for, for the Messiah. But that, that wasn't who Jesus was. You know, that's who John the Baptist was. John the Baptist was the Elijah that was, was preparing the way. They said, and other people say that, uh, that you're a prophet. You're, you're sent from, from God. You're, you're pointing people in, in God's direction. You're, you're pointing them to, to the kingdom of God. So those were things that, that the people were saying, that the crowds were saying, the multitudes were, were saying. And then I think Jesus really gets to, to, to his point of what this encounter with the disciples is all about. Because he then says, who do you say I am? Now, reporting what others said, I think was probably easier than for the disciples to, to give their, their own testimony at that point. And as you can guess, you know, Peter was the one that spoke up for, for all the disciples, and he said, you are the Messiah. Uh, the fact that Peter stood up and or spoke up and, 
and seemed to speak for, for all the disciples, I have a feeling that this is something that the disciples had talked about. You know, who do you think Jesus is? And I think probably that uh, with some of the rivalries that were going on in, with the disciples, you know, if there were some who had differing opinions, you know, Peter might have said, well, Thomas, he's not sure who you are. And Judas, you know, he's not really sure about the, this whole thing about uh, being the, the Messiah, but, uh, but, but he, he likes hanging out with the, the group and, and likes the, the, um, the, the notoriety that, that you're getting in, in these communities. Now, Peter didn't, didn't say what different ones in the group, the reservations they might hold, but Peter responded and said, you are the Messiah. You know, Jesus was, as he was addressing the, the, all the disciples, you know, it was an issue that, uh, that he wanted to know where they were. You know, they did not fully understand what it meant for him to be the Messiah, but, but at that point, they, they shared what their understanding was. They believed that he was the Messiah, but, but the full implications of what that meant, was they were still learning and, and they were growing. It became apparent at, at this point that, that those who were closest to Jesus, those who had traveled with Jesus the, the most, that they had a different understanding of who he was than the rest of the, the crowds. And when Peter declared that, uh, that Jesus w was the Messiah, it then seems strange that the next instruction that Jesus gives them. The next instruction Jesus gives them is, don't tell anyone. But he's come to, to let it be known that he's the Messiah. Why would, would he not want them to tell anyone? Now, for those of you that have read through the, the book of Mark recently, you may have recognized that on several occasions, Jesus said to a group or to an individual, don't tell anyone. You know, I believe it's an issue that Jesus is, is wanting to, to lay the foundations you know, for it to, to be known that, that he's the Messiah, but, but it's not yet time. It's not yet time for, for the masses to, to know or, or understand that, that he's the Messiah. As Jesus asked the question, who do people say that I am? And as he asked the, the disciples, you know, who do you believe that I am? I want to ask you the, the same question this morning. Who do you say Jesus is? Do you believe he um, is a, a good man, a moral teacher, a, a good teacher? Do you believe that he's the Messiah? Do you believe that he's the savior of the world? Do you believe that, that he's God's son? If you believe that, uh, if you only believe that he's, he's a good man or a moral person, you know, his impact on your life you know, can kind of be whatever you choose it to be. You know, you, you can pick and choose the, the parts of Jesus that you want to embrace as your own. But if you say he's the Messiah, if you believe he's, he's the Son of God, then it, it's not an issue of picking and choosing, but, but it's an issue of embracing all that he is and, and following his example. You know, this, this week I want you to, to seek to answer that, that question for, for yourself. Who do you say that Jesus is? How, how would you put it into words? And as Rick said at the, the beginning of the, the service, not, not a, a 10 minute dissertation, but, but if you were to put it in, in one sentence, how is it that you would describe who Jesus is in your life? You know, this morning our, our memory verse comes from Mark chapter 1, verse 35. It says, Very early in the morning, while it was still dark, Jesus got up and left his house and went off to a solitary place where he prayed. You know, as you memorize that verse, as you recite that verse each day this week, may it, 
May it be a reminder of the importance in each of our lives for prayer, of connecting with our Heavenly Father, that that, that becomes a, a source of power and strength and, and a source of, of guidance in, in our daily lives. I'm not trying to make anyone feel guilty about prayer, but I want to challenge you to, to take some intentional steps to to uh, invest in prayer this week, particularly if, if that's an area of, of your life that, that you feel that you're, you're lacking or, or neglecting. I also want you to, to consider, who is Jesus? Who is Jesus to you, and how would you answer that question, who is Jesus to you? Think about how it is that you would articulate it, how you might, might put it in, in one sentence. Also, if you want to be a part of the, the prayer initiative next Sunday afternoon for the schools, I would encourage you to, to mark that on your, on your connection card this morning. Well, let's pray together. Lord Jesus, we thank you that you have come into the world. We thank you that you are the Messiah, that you are, are the Savior, and, and we confess that even the level of understanding we have of what that means, there's still deeper levels of, of learning and understanding that, that we need. And so, Lord, I pray that we might grow in, in our intimacy with you in, in prayer in order that we might also grow in, in our knowledge and experience of you in, in our daily lives. Through Christ our Lord, we pray. Amen.